Hi guys. Uh, so it's you know DDK, and this is going to be a demo on E1M2, as you can see, between Milton's primary versus BPS primary from the last Salvation Draft 2012. And yeah, this is going to be a pretty chilled one. I already know <laughs> what to expect on this demo, as it was given with a uh, not a warning, but a premonition, a premonition into some domination but we'll see we'll just watch him relax so here we go <clears throat> so uh let's uh get all the track off it's milton milton's the man that we're gonna be watching and of course you know he's he's known as one of pretty much the best players of all time in quake world i mean a one-on-one -on -one player with many many accolades in two on two as well, he's won a lot, absolutely fearsome indeed. And of course, in four on four, that's really where he's known as being an absolute beast. Originally, coming from a team called Satanic Slaughter Clan, Finnish, some Finnish guys, and being this guy who just sat in Division 3 with them and kind of basically playing way above the level of the rest of the team, and he was already outstanding and a superstar for many many years ago you know he's been playing the game I don't, I don't want to say exactly how many years but well over a decade let's just keep it at that Milton's been around for a very long time playing this game for a very long time and most famously he was in the Viper squad who won huge, like, so many tournaments back to back and four on four it's unbelievable really but anyway as we get into this game we can see that Milton right now he hasn't died at all as far as I know that would be a correct thing to say as I, as I check the scoreboard there and he has a rocket launcher and it's E1M2 he's got a yellow he's lacking some rockets so he's gonna want to try and find some that's why he's gone over to this area picks up the rocket pack there and E5 though so that's not going to be really holding it holding him yeah I don't know what word I was looking for there but we'll move on so, but the point I was trying to make is that you have to really manage your rockets in this game so it's something you're always very 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 conscious about with the rocket launcher especially on E1M2 because that's what you got the rocket launcher and all there are a lot of players there trying to flood them down and that's also a common thing to see on this map is a lot of flooding as uh, there's only one rocket launcher that spawns and that's the only major weapon really there's no shaft or anything and so you've got to be conscious of these rockets, got to make sure that you always know exactly how many you have because if you're starting to get low you need to start being more conservative with your ammunition and start moving yourself towards places where there's going to be ammunition for you to pick up so that's really the thing there but right now Milton with 14 rockets is looking pretty strong right now just at the bottom of this yellow area trying, I mean he wants to kind of rocket jump up maybe if possible but no, it's BPS going to come around the corner with that quad and kill him so not that's his first death there but yeah really I mean you can rocket jump up and grab that YA and sometimes that's a great move to do but uh, yeah, BPS with the quad coming in and stealing away everything from Milton there and killing him not much he could do he got a lot of frags out of that rocket launcher and you can really see that on E1 and 2 a rocket launcher can really translate into a lot of frags if you're not careful I mean sometimes People say to me, they say, you know, why is it that, you know, you see like maybe in movies or maybe just, you know, when they were just spectating a, a game of Quake World, you know, why is it that this, there's this one player with a rocket launcher and he gets, you know, 10 kills, like 10 like new fresh spawners are running at him. And there are, there are situations where a rocket launcher on, even into on almost any map can really rack up you know, 20 to 30 frags. It's not just those frags that they rack up, it's the positions they hold, it's the spawns they hold, it's, it's, the, it's the, the area control, the resources they allow their teammates to get by having that positionally strong weapon that it really makes it a priority to keep track of enemy weapons and make sure that you can, if, if you're gonna, you know, if, if you can say like, okay, let's trade 10, 15 frags to make sure that that rocket launcher dies. Because in some spots that's worth it. On E1, and on E1M2, as we said, there's only one rocket launcher, and that's the only weapon, the only rocket launcher that spawns every 30 seconds. And so, if you do let an enemy rocket launcher, wow! Oh, that was pretty nice there. Uh, getting bounced up by this snails, and then getting finished with that quick switch to the rocket in midair. But yeah, that's the idea, really. I mean, if you get 
a rocket launcher on this map, a yellow armor in good position, and enough rockets to work with, like this area here, this grenade launcher area is really nice, then he's going to get a lot of frags. He's going to get a lot of frags, and it's not just that, he's going to get in his team lots of yellow armors, and that's going to really help them to pick up any newly spawning rocket launchers are really going to help them when they make an attack onto that so that's that's why you see you know a lot of players flooding onto enemy rocket launchers because it's important to control where your enemies are and boomstickers in this game really have a multitude of jobs and i mean they are somewhat expendable but of course you you know you don't want to get too crazy and just die all, like constantly that's not useful really but one thing that they are, you know, that it's important for them to do is to get information for their teammates who do have weapons. Because you can see, like, you can take so much damage in this game, and as a rocket launcher, you really want to know all the information you you can possibly know, so that you can make good decisions and not take the damage, not get yourself into a position where you're, you know, you're you're putting yourself into maybe a bad spot as far as damage is concerned like you're going to start taking damage you're going to maybe get into a bad fight like you, you don't you don't want that to happen so your boom stickers can really give you a lot of information about the location and or, or, or the situation of certain areas on the map for example the grenade launcher area if that area is clear through to the yellow then all of a sudden that means that the rocket launchers can go okay boom let's let's go you know, through that way, and that's safer than what Milton did. Was you know, he wanted to get to that yellow to see if he could pressure it, see if he could get a steal. And there was a rocket launcher at that GL, GL already, so he was like, okay, I'm gonna see if that guy's got good timing on the on the yellow. He didn't. He was a little bit late, and that gave Milton the opportunity to rocket jump up, steal it, and get the frag on that rocket launcher. So, you know, that's that's one of the things to think about. So, information really, really important job for boom stickers. I mean, you got other stuff that's important for them as well. Um, and you know that's to make sure they're challenging areas and, and also supporting team team weapons. And there we can see Milton, unfortunately not able to get the best of that fight versus the quad. It was a good little fight that he took there because it was a, an enclosed space. So BPS would have had to have made a very good shot um, to avoid splash damaging himself. And Milton can shoot as many rockets as he wants because you know he doesn't have the four times damage. So if he does hit himself in the face with a rocket against BPS, it's not going to be too bad for him. But if BPS does it, then BPS is going to kill Milton for sure. You know, but he's going to kill himself as well, leaving like a pack there just lying next to that spawn, which is not something you ever really want to do. Managing the quad with a rocket launcher in this game is very difficult because you know. The splash damage is absolutely huge, and it's four times damage. So, a direct hit is uh, 440 damage. As 110 damage is, is a direct hit in this game with a rocket. So yeah, the splash damage is incredibly strong. And there you can see, I have no idea where that rocket hit, but Milton was insta gibbed by it. I mean, you've only got the best armor you have on this map is this yellow in this yellow room. You have green armor, but green armor is absolutely useless, totally useless. The only way you can actually even use up an entire green armor is if you have a mega. That's how little the damage reduction is. So that's something to consider. That it, you know, a green armor is always going to be better on a player who's got a mega than one who hasn't. And uh, so far, it's looking relatively even. I've got Milton's team um, doing pretty well. Not too far behind right now, 13 frags behind. So not too bad. Milton picking up another rocket launcher. So really here he wants to be able to sneak his way into the yellow room. So he's gonna go around the back way, maybe he gets the green armor. There's no point really going to the mega side of the map. So he's gonna get a teammate going first to cover him. There's, see that's the power there. That's a OK98 going first, protecting his teammate, giving him information of what's lying in wait. And look at Milton just, killing all those guys in that yellow area and even here at the... Wow, he's taken very little damage. This is really good work from him so far. And with that yellow spawning very soon, that's absolutely phenomenal stuff. Like, he could even give this one away if he really wanted to, but he shouldn't, I don't think. And he's going to take it. He wanted to wait to see what would happen. He takes it. He's got Quark spawning in 20 seconds now. And here we can see the danger, the damage that a player gets a rocket and a yellow can deal when they set themselves up in this yellow area and he could even start just running the quads, running through the yellow and basically concerning himself with that and 
But if he removes the potential for his the opposing team to get any armor, then it doesn't really matter too much if they get those rocket launchers. I mean, it's really uh, it can be troublesome because rocket launchers are always going to be really good, especially on this map. But with no armor, it really makes any plays they make much more risky. So, so that's like a really solid one-man job that Milton could do to really, really strengthen stuff for his team. We can already see that he's plus ten frags in here. Three, an area of three players there, Milton. Got to be careful now because he is getting a little bit low, and all those little bit boomstick shots do chip away slowly at his health and armor. But that was a pretty nice run, to be honest. And then Milton with the long range super shotgun isn't going to be finding himself a frag there on BPS, even though BPS was extremely low. I mean, the splash on that thing is incredibly... Oh my god, that was really bad, actually. Milton actually dropping a pack there, going to go after the enemy player, knows he's really low. There's RST with that pack that Milton dropped. Milton knows he can get him, he's going to go for the kill. RST using that choke point very well there with that rocket. Perfect play from RST to survive there. But how long can he keep it up? Milton gets a new rocket and instigives... RST with that rocket launcher, a very good play from Milton. I think that's actually not too bad. He even manages to get to the pack, so that's wonderful news there for Milton's team. And as you can see there, gets the spawn frag as well. Pretty crazy stuff. OK98 even coming through and BPS on the chase, gonna get taken down as well. So Milton knows he's not very safe. He's waiting for the health and kind of just going, okay, I'll just watch the spawn as well. And that's pretty much what he's doing right now. He desperately cannot do anything at this point because you know, he's so low. If he shoots a rocket and chances of getting fragged, he's going to drop a pack and the health will spawn for him. So that's good. Now he can actually make his way to the yellow. That uh, yellow area is safe for Milton. So he can just go right through the trap area, which is what he's about to do now. Get the yellow, the green even first and then go straight through to the trap. Uh, here we go, through the trap area, to that yellow, as it is a clean path for him. And there's a yellow spawning for him, and I'm going to give it to Moya, because Moya with that, with no armor at all, so to speak of. And uh, Milton, 52 frags right now, 18 deaths, pretty good stuff, but this is just, uh, you know, there you go, you, you see the rocket skills that he has to make sure that he deals as little damage to himself as possible while maximizing the damage output to the opponent, a little tactical a thing that you have to learn how to do because the opposing players are going to want to get close to you. The boomstickers want you to self-damage yourself because they can do 24 damage full on with a with a boomstick shot. But you know, if if they can add, add to that damage, like the fact that you shoot a rocket, like you you know shoot a rocket, uh, get self-damaged by shooting against them if they're really close to you, and that's like perfect. You know, really good stuff for a boomsticker to get that damage onto the rocket to make him weak and more susceptible to dying to a flood. A follow-up flood so that's really really good stuff especially if someone misses a rocket or like they misplay it you know you can get to really some into some really nice situations but here we go Milton with the SSG and quad always a beautiful combination and there the yellow is lying in wait for him and that's that is going to be excellent stuff as he continues on this quad on, on this rampage flying through the map onto this mega area now finds another couple players just there's another spawn and there's nine spawns on this map uh, unlike DM3 where there's only 6 spawns, meaning there's always telefrags at the start of the map because there's not enough space for, four, for 8 players to spawn at once. Which is quite an interesting dynamic actually, it's quite funny. And uh, there's technically nothing wrong with it, as long as um, the, you know, those, you know, the spawn telefrags don't actually give frags, then there's nothing wrong with it. So it's quite an interesting little dynamic that is completely retarded, but there's nothing really wrong with it anyway. And Milton finding another 2 players there off the spawn. So it looks like looks like he's really starting to feel himself now. I'm gonna get into a groove. Quad is spawning in two seconds. Milton gonna grab that. There we go. Very chilled affair here right now, as far as the casting goes at least. Oh <laughs> yes. Indeed. Indeed. And there you can see him shooting the rocket as far behind that enemy player as possible as he wants to avoid any splash damage. I mean, I, I like highlighting this to people because um, I know that Quake World players who watch this will go, yeah, sure, you know, I know that. But people who don't watch Quake World or don't have never really played it, like, that stuff's really difficult to do, actually. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of learning, a lot of experience to get the techniques down, to really know how to place your rockets in, in the, you know, what situations. Because you see there, look, Milton, how much damage did he take? It took, like, 50 damage. Almost 50 damage there from hitting himself with that rocket. 
and that you know all of a sudden that's now three boomstick good boomstick shots could kill him like it, it makes a big difference and the rocket is so so powerful so you really want to keep that alive and it's that level of perfection that level of uh, precision that makes these players so good it's the stuff that you have to do if you want to be a top player Something to appreciate always as a spectator, and there's another rocket kill. Milton really taking minimal damage until there. And you can kill spawners with a single rocket in this game, unlike in Quake Live, which I think is really nice. It feels really good at least when you're doing it, <laughs> that's for sure. Milton is sitting on that yellow there. Another yellow pickup for him. You can see 84 frags with 5 minutes left. I've got a feeling that he, he's going to start speeding up the fragging as well. And the, use of the lovely use of all the weapons under the, under the sun there. SMG, the super nail gun, the super shotgun, and the rocket, of course, respectively. See there, avoiding that damage. Gonna pick up that quad. Oh, quad SSG, beautiful. Just waiting for that yellow. <laughs> There's a double spawn, spawn frag there. Boom. Wow. And one more. Can we find any others? Come on. As he flies around again once again in this area. There's quite a lot of spawns around here. He's just going to pick up some more frags and make his way back over to that yellow area to replenish the armor that was lost with that timing. And there you can see, like, so important. Because Boomstickers will be trying to block you all the time. Wow, that grenade finding its way to Milton there. Very, very good shotgunning there from Milton. Just enjoy, that's, that's what I say, enjoy this display. This this uh, this video is really about Milton just having a nice game, showing a lot of nice frags, what is, what is possible on E1M2. That's, that's what this one's about. And you know, Milton, bunnying around. I love I love the feel of this engine, the engine Quick One. The yeah, Quick One is just so, so fluent, fluid. Actually, that's a better word. Oh. There's the rocket dead. It's so fluid and it feels so good and so solid when you're playing with it. I was talking to Vu about this when he was in Milan and you know he felt exactly the same. Nothing feels quite as good as the Quake One engine when you're when you're a little you know, when you have some familiarity with it, it just feels so good. I mean much like the Quake Quake 3 engine just feels really nice when you when you go towards the, the Unreal engine for a Quaker, it just feels horrible in comparison. I don't know why exactly it is, but the Quake one and Quake 3 engine just feels so 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 nice to play on. And of course it's so crisp with the air control, you have so much fluidity, you know, actually in the game as well. You know, if we just ignore everything else, but look at this Milton just on a rampage here, absolute dominance, crushing his opponents, making it look like Charles play really just the master a master class from Milton. E1 and 2, one of the, the best maps I think for new, newer players to start learning the, the dynamics that are at play in 4 and 4. It's one of the most, it, it, you know, it really has a lot of the fundamentals of 4 and 4 without all the complexities that you find on DM2 and DM3. So it's a very simple, you know, really simple map, but you will learn about team play on this map. You will learn about fighting with rockets, you know, some efficient use of positioning and stuff like that, and how to kill boom stickers, because kind of being able to kill spawners efficiently is, is a really, really important skill. Oh my god, RST, so close with those grenades. His pine's not quite able to finish the job though. And land those. You can see the, the pine going onto the spawn. Oh, what a steal from RST there. That is annoying. Milton with 134 frags. The, the fragging is just endless right now. Can he find any more though? I want to see more. There's one more. There should be a spawn around here. There's like three or four spawns right there, so. There's a spawn here as well. That'd be yellow. As Milton picks it up, and there is going to be a spawn frag. Just dismissing that opponent there. It's like, nope, see you later. Oh, almost got. Always pushed that guy through the spawn, through the teleporter. Almost like telefragging Milton. Oh my god, close, close calls.
Yeah, a really chilled, chilled commentary. It's pretty late. It's like uh, 1:30 a.m. over here, so chilled stuff. Oh, Milton was quite as stacked as you can be on this map on one quad rocket, not even close to the rectus. All all he needs to die. Oh, what do you get the pack? Nope. So 140 frags there for Milton with 20 seconds left. 140 frags, that's uh, you know, 21 deaths. Not something you see too often in other games. But really, you know, it's no simple task. I mean, getting 100 frags only when I'm too. Oh, the spawn tile frag there, gotta be careful of standing over the spawns. But yeah, you know, getting 100 frags on this map isn't too difficult to do sometimes, but it's always nice to see it. It's one of the interesting or, or one of the more enjoyable aspects about this map, but. There you go guys, there was Milton on the UNM2 having some fun, 142 frags. Let's just scroll up to see, look at his stats quickly before I end this one off. And there is Milton, almost 16,000 damage, 10 rocket kills, 6 dropped, of course that's a very important statistic. The stats are somewhat lacking in this game, um, but maybe we'll, we'll see improvement to that in the future, but yeah. Uh, good stuff guys, I'll catch you next time with... I think we'll be looking at perhaps you know a proper game instead of just a, a showcase of skill. So see you guys next time. Hope you have a good New Year's and keep checking back for more content. Peace.